hello everyone i'm back with another video and in today's video we're going to be up against tiger like at the map fishing hole now of course without further ado um let's go jump straight into it but of course don't forget to subscribe smash the like button and ring the bell icon to be notified of any content coming out of my channel okay so we fast forward a bit here as we progress to collecting those containers all right so i opted out for the land side of things to get those containers on the land and then I opted out for two shipyards and a common production boost to speed up the process of production of those commons to get the containers on the ocean. Alright, so I think he primarily opted out for a shipyard faster, hence he'll get those containers on the ocean faster than I did. Or, at least he got more containers on the ocean than I did. Alright, so we fast forward a bit here. I did put up a gun tower here as this map is actually a very good candidate for delta rushes as of course that's delta, deltas can go on land um you know and ambush you from this side or the bottom side of this base also on the top side to your primary and or main entrance now i'm gonna have to try and compete against that super container and uh, we're gonna be using the uh range of the um kaiman advantage however there's like a cyclone here and deltas against those kaimans that I have, so I'm primarily outnumbered and outclassed, as I need more kaimans to oppose this kind of situation. Well, I obviously didn't have enough. Going HQ3 amongst all this, and uh, you also already have HQ level 3 faster than I did, if you guys may have noticed, and he is also adding more supply centers now so you'll have more containers on the ocean and got the super container at the expense of more deltas and cyclones he spent for it so it's kind of a bit of a even just that he's more developed on the base side of things so thanks to the gun tower and uh, the sniper tower which can zone out the infantry and slowly damage that those uh, cyclones he managed to not or I actually managed to fend off the attack with just two towers. So that's uh, how it should be. Okay. Alright, so uh, he already got those three cyclones trying to bully my del my gun tower around. So I got like the special vehicle factory for that reason to produce a porcupine. And then of course bring the fight out of those or drive those cyclones away. Okay, shipyard level two. Okay. All right here and additional power plant so scout right here to see what he have mm-hmm juicy juicy x facility going level two and he's not non-stop producing those uh, vikings now knowing all that i'm going to have to somewhat produce more alligators here on my end but since i'm actually behind in base development since i opted out for a gun tower and a sniper tower at the start um I'm going to produce one alligator at a time and every now and then produce two alligators at a time while developing my base as I need to allocate some of my resources for porcupines due to the presence of that seraphim. So I could not really, you know, not attend to my base uh, development here on the land side of things. I need the anti-air, a jaguar, and then an alligator to defend against the ocean and against the seraphim. Okay. So upgrading the uh stuff right here although i was not really expecting him to go after my naval platform there you go and his seraphim actually died against five anti-ear alligator and a platform's anti-ear and then i managed to attack those uh, vikings which are not facing my alligators and also an addition of my platform attacking his uh, vikings so this is a big plus one here for me as i as I can somewhat, you know, like, I can somewhat, um, get the advantage in terms of the uh, engagement, even though he had more than me. Okay, so yeah, I managed to destroy a bunch of stuff here, including that, um, yeah, the Vikings that he had, but we obviously know that Vikings are more powerful than, than the alligator, uh, so I'm not gonna go outside the range of my platform, I would like to be inside the range of that platform to gain me advantage and not lose this engagement or not lose my momentum okay so more uh jaguar here for me as well as more porcupine 
and I'm going to use a uh, naval production boost as he's also non-stop producing those Vikings on his end. Okay, super container appearing right here, so I'm going to have to try and grab it and even up the odds of base development. Okay, there you go. His uh, Vikings is still out of position. There you go. I got like all the super containers around there. And then I got like a thousand resources. So I'm going to have to upgrade HQ level 4. There you go. HQ level 4 is on the way. And then, of course, I'm going to have to formation or, you know, go into a formation where in which my alligators can actually engage effectively against the Vikings. Now, again, he's non-stop using or production of those Viking. Okay. Meanwhile, I'll be adding more anti-air around here with the porcupines as I only have three. And this guy right here, again, level three HQ still and that Seraphim is out. And he is actually producing a Zeus. So with that in mind, I'm going to have to position my army around here to, of course, help defend that gun tower. And then, of course, the porcupines out in front since I'm expecting the Seraphim to come within the range um, and attack my stuff. Level 4 HQ is almost done. I see a Viking right here. See, Let's see what he has. Okay. He saw my alligators in good formation right there in a straight line. So I'm going to have to adjust it um diagonally to somewhat observe what you have or go at at least a little bit at the bottom uh with a straight line to prevent him from um you know flanking me or you know having a better engagement in terms of better land um surface okay two avia factory right here level three uh prototype facility to get that Leviathan out, and this uh, two uh, Avia Factory is primarily for Dragonfly, and of course a Wasp. Again, using a Naval Scouting Boost to further my view. Of course, I would like to see what he has in there, and non-stop produce production of alligators. So at this point, it's more about how you handle or manage your resources to achieve what you need. Although you need to compensate for some, as of course, if you produce other units uh, apart from Navy, you'll be lacking behind in other areas. There you go, that Seraphim. Okay, got like four porcupines around here firing at that Seraphim. And then all of a sudden, majority of my porcupines has been destroyed. Only three remains. And, uh, yep, yep, yep. Okay, I'll be able to drive that Seraphim away. Okay. And so I see here a Viking again, and I'm expecting him to have more Viking than my alligator since I have plenty of command points on land and on the aviation kind of thing. So uh, my army is split apart in terms of command points. So I'll be primarily using the Dragonfly and the Wasp Leviathan to support me on the ocean due to the lack of alligator count that I had going for me. Okay. Now, this also gives me an opportunity to attack him at different angles of the base depending, um, you know, depending on the situation. So, this army right here is kind of like very versatile. And uh, he could not really attack it with the vertex given that I have an alligator on the ocean. So, it's going to be quite hard to manage. Okay, scouting Boosie. He also has HQ level 4 and still non-stop production out of those Vikings. Super container appearing right in the middle here. Just waiting for the Leviathan. Okay. Alright, now, so I'm going to have to start the engagement right here as he doesn't have... Doesn't really have a Poseidon. And as you guys can see... Alright, he also have plenty of Vikings around here. He has more Vikings than my alligators as you guys can see. And then I opted out with the first shot taken right there. And let's see how this goes. Okay, obviously I do have the better engagement here, and he's also going to attack me on land. Okay, now majority of his Vikings has been cleaned up thanks to my Dragonfly Leviathan and the Wasp. Switch to Gummon, uh, common defense boost so that my gun tower can help out ease the pain, or well technically destroy a bunch of stuff. Seraphim dealing a bunch of damage here on my, onto my units. Alright, majority of his Zeus are still alive, including the Earth Seraphim and the 
um, Cerberus. Okay, so this this is looking really bad here for me on the ocean. And so I will be using my small aviation group to move up to his base from the bottom side of the map to attack his base. Now, if you guys can see right here, the mistake here was instead of putting an anti-air, he did put up a ton of naval platforms which cost power and more resources as opposed to the anti-air anti-air tower okay so here is what i have right around here the naval platform he thinks that i'll be attacking him with seven alligators which is basically not enough if you include my two alligators right here that is being go it's going to be used to defend my base meanwhile he actually managed to destroy some of my stuff here like the building or a factory a gun tower and so on however i'm going to be retaliating by somewhat using a common defense boost and uh, he'll manage to take out my HQ I'll defend uh, or I'll somewhat build some stuff right there like the barracks okay meanwhile on his end I'm gonna have to try and attack his base using the alligators that I got right here just a decoy destroying a, a platform and so he doesn't have enough resources to build anti-air towers nor does he have the electricity to power all those towers in case he might have. And so at this point, it's going to be like another base trade scenario. But however, three Zeus ain't going to last against a mole. Two more dragonflies that are already almost out. And majority of his stuff right here will be unpowered. And I actually managed to take out a bunch of stuff right here with the acid burn and the nuclear strike. Blue. There you go. And at this point, it's gonna be clear as day as to who will win this battle. There's only two Zeus remaining here. I got I got like the mole right there to help out deal with the defense. And just again, Dragonfly Wasp and Leviathan managed to win the game. Yay! Alright, so that's just how you do it. So again, I would like to make this a meta, the Dragonfly Wasp and the Leviathan. It is very versatile. Um, and if the enemy has plenty of vertex, you can just opt out to add like a bit of porcupines right there, have them march in the same speed, and then attack the base from a different angle. And technically, the vertex will do its job in terms of zoning out a seraphim and or a vertex that's trying to attack your leviathan. Just make sure that the wasp and the leviathan are close to each other so that the wasp passive can also affect the leviathan and protect it against those avia shenanigans. All right, so that's going to be all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a great day, and good luck with your battles. Oh, and don't forget to check out my previous videos. They have things like this, guides, tips, and tricks in every battle with commentary. Yay! GG. Bye now.